Okay, here we go. Second example of the von Haber cycle. Now, in problems of this sort, one thing you're gonna be told for sure is the identity of the salt. You want to calculate the lattice enthalpy for. So here you'll be told the calcium fluoride, you wanna know the lattice enthalpy. You will not be given the equation that I'm presenting here. You have to come up with this equation on your own based on the definition of the lattice enthalpy. And for calcium fluoride, which has a formula of CaF2 solid, you have only one calcium, but you have two fluorines. So for the lattice enthalpy, for which the reactants are gaseous ions, you will have calcium two plus gas, and then you'll have two fluoride minus gases. Okay, so they're both gases, they're both ions, but they also need to be balanced in terms of the salt. And like enthalpies of formation, you're only allowed to have one equivalent of the product present. So only one for the balancing coefficient of the product. Then you go ahead and write the enthalpy of formation, which also needs one equivalent of the calcium fluoride solid. But this time around, the reactants will be the neutral elements in their elemental form. For calcium, that means that you need calcium solid. For fluoride, that means that you're talking about F2 gas, which is the diatomic molecule. And since you need two fluorides on the final structure, the F2 is perfectly you know, set up in terms of the proportion. So you don't, you don't need to put any extra coefficients in front of it. All right, now here's where the story begins. Uh, first things first, let's notice that calcium has a two plus charge in the lattice enthalpy. And what that means is that we're gonna have to go from calcium zero ultimately to calcium two plus. And that means that we're gonna, go, we're gonna have to go through the first and the second ionization energies sequentially to account for that charge difference. The other thing too is that the calcium solid needs to be turned into calcium gas. So that means that we will need to use the sublimation enthalpy for calcium. Now let's take a look at fluorine too. Uh, we have a uh, gaseous fluorine, gaseous fluoride. So the state is actually perfect. There's no sublimation going on there, but we're starting with diatomic fluorine. So we're gonna have to break that molecule into single atoms. And once we get the single atoms, that's when we should turn the atoms into fluoride ions. Okay, so let's start with all of that. Calcium. We're gonna uh, go from calcium solid to calcium gas, and once we are in the gas phase, we can then turn calcium gas into calcium plus one, which is a first ionization energy, and then calcium plus gas into calcium two plus gas, which is the second ionization energy. Notice that I'm also inputting the electrons as products. As I said though, you also need to turn the calcium solid into calcium gas, which requires the sublimation enthalpy to make that happen. All right, so you can kind of do it the way I presented it here where I kind of went backwards. I went from the two plus state to the plus one, to, from the plus one to the zero, and then from the zero gas phase to the zero solid phase. Or you could basically look at the reactance of the enthalpy formation and say, I want to go from that to the reactant of the enthalpy uh, the lattice enthalpy. So that means solid needs to be turned to gas. Once in the gas phase, zero turns into plus one, plus one turns into two plus, and that gives you the three equations that we have here. Okay, now for uh, fluorine, same idea. You want to start with F2 gas and you want to work your way up to two fluoride minuses gases. So in terms of the minus, the two fluorides can be acquired by two fluorine gaseous atoms taking up an electron each. Now the definition of electron affinity is that two, excuse me, that one fluoride turns into one F gas, neutral, with one electron, you know, being ejected. So we're talking about the opposite effect right here, but the proportions are also twice as big, right? Instead of having only one fluoride, we're dealing with two fluorides. So we need to multiply the electron affinity not only by negative one, but also by two. So negative two in essence is the factor that we need to apply to the electron affinity. All right, now, as I said before, the F2 gas needs to be broken up into atoms. And since we are breaking one F2 molecule into the two atoms, that's by itself the definition of the bond association enthalpy. This does not need to be multiplied by any number because as long as we only have one F2, so one reactant, 
the definition of bonus association enthalpy is exactly that. It's when we start having the 0.5s in front of this, or the 2s, or the 3 halves, or whatever the number may be other than 1, that you do need to multiply the bond association enthalpy. Same effect for the electron affinity here. As long as you only have one anion present, the electron affinity is um, basically given as the definition directly from the equation. But the moment you start having numbers other than one in front of your anion, that's when you're going to have to multiply your electron affinity. All right, now at this point, we basically have everything required to add up all these values and end up with the enthalpy of formation, except that what we want to find out is the lattice enthalpy. So once again, add up all the values that are in black, add them up together and subtract them from the enthalpy of formation. So you should end up with the following. Oh, and by the way, your calciums cancel out, your fluorides and fluorines cancel out, your electrons cancel out, so you end up with basically the enthalpy formation equation. Yes, that's just for confirmation's sake more than anything else. The more important thing here is that you will subtract the summation of all the black terms here from the enthalpy of formation. So notice here that I am adding up all of the terms in black, and once I add them up, I subtract them from the enthalpy of formation. So what we need to do now is look up the values. We start with the bond dissociation enthalpy of fluorine, which is 158. And so we input that for the bond dissociation enthalpy. Now the sublimation enthalpy of calcium is given here in the table. That's 178 kilojoules per mole. Okay, now we're going to look at the ionization energies, I believe. Yeah, first ionization energy for calcium is 590. So we input the 590. And now for the second ionization energy, the value is 1145. So we input that in there. All right, finally, we'll look up the value of the electron affinity. For fluorine, that's 328. So we input the 328 in the equation, and we, of course, we need to multiply by negative 2. So once you do that, and you add up all of the values together, you will subtract that resulting value, 1415, from the enthalpy formation of calcium fluoride, which is a value I need to give you. The value happens to be negative 1220 kilojoules per mole. Once you subtract the two together, you end up finding out the lattice enthalpy is negative 2635 kilojoules per mole. And so this type of cycle, you know, can be applied. And by the way, this can be used for equations in which the ionic salt has, you know, a high charge. Like for instance, I could give you, um, if I wanted to, I could give you, uh, for instance, manganese 7 with you know some other ion to basically give you neutral salt and then you have to go through each ionization energy to get all those things um not that i'm going to do that but it is a possibility and it relies that you remember how to apply the definitions of ionization energy electron affinity bond dissociation enthalpies in order to find out the lattice enthalpy Okay, so now with all that being said, I'm going to move on to the approximation, but I'm going to save that for the next video. So I'll see you there.